I'll now walk you through a short video that shows how to perform bioinformatic analysis with Patrick. First, navigate to the Patrick website and log into the evolving STEM account using the username and password provided in the Google Drive Documents folder. From the home page, click on the Workspaces tab. Then click on Workspaces at the top of the drop-down box. Now double-click on the Evolving STEM folder. You will see 10 folders that contain pictures and sequencing reads for each mutant. Representative images of each mutant and an image of the Pseudomonas fluorescens ancestor for comparison are also provided in the Google Drive document folder. To run the analysis, click on the Services tab. Then select Variation Analysis from the drop-down menu. Load the reads belonging to your selected mutant by clicking the folder icon next to Read File 1. Then navigate to the Workspace folder where your files are located by double-clicking the Parent folder, double-clicking Evolving STEM, double-clicking the folder of the mutant that you want to analyze. In this example, I'm analyzing mutant number one. Now, you want to click on the read file with the extension .fwd paired .fastq.gz and then click OK. We'll then repeat these steps for read file 2, but instead load the read file with the extension .rev paired .fastq.gz. We'll now set the parameters for the analysis by selecting the bow tie to aligner and free bayes snip collar. Bow tie to is software that takes the short reads generated during sequencing and matches them to the to a reference sequence. Free bayes compares these mapped reads to the reference and identifies any differences between the two. These differences are the mutations present in your mutant. Select Pseudomonas fluorescens SBW25 as your reference sequence by typing its name into the target genome box. Then choose the first option from the drop-down menu. Click the folder icon next to the output folder box to choose the folder where you want the output to be sent. I will choose the practice folder for my output. Now you'll need to name your output. Click the arrow in the Paired Reads Library to place your reads into the selected libraries box, and then click Submit. You can click on the Jobs bar to view your progress. The analysis should take approximately 5 to 20 minutes to run. Once the job is complete, you'll double-click on the job to open the output folder. This folder displays information about the job and the files generated by the analysis. The file we are interested in viewing is the all.var.tsv, which is a text file that will reveal the mutations that were identified in the mutant you analyzed. Double click on the file name, then click the download icon <coughs> to move the file to your home computer. You can open the .tsv file in a spreadsheet program, such as Excel, that's what I will be using here, to organize your data. The Drive folder also provides instructions for using Google Sheets. The .tsv file separates column data by tabs. Excel and Google Sheets can use this information to place your data into appropriate columns. 
Although the free base variant color does a good job at identifying mutations, we will need to do some manual filtering of the data to identify mutations that occurred during the evolution experiment and we have high confidence are accurate. First, we will remove mutations that were already present in the Pseudomonas fluorescence ancestor used in the experiments. They differ from the published reference sequence we used in the analysis, but are not new mutations. To do this, I will delete three variants. The first at position 3,447,980, the second at position 985,332, and the third at position 45,877. Next, we will remove low frequency variants. Because we are analyzing clones, we expect the genetic information to be identical across all of the sequenced reads. Variants found at less than 80% are likely errors introduced during sequencing or read alignment, so we should remove them. To make these variants easy to identify, we will first sort the data by highlighting all data columns. Then click Data, Sort, and sort by a variant fraction from largest to smallest. I'll now delete all variants at lower than 80% frequency, which can be seen in column H. After removing low frequency variants, you may need to remove variants with low quality scores, as these are unreliable. Again, highlight the data columns, then sort by score from largest to smallest and delete all rows with a score of less than 200. Score values can be found in column F. Your data is now filtered and the remaining rows identify the mutation or mutations that were present in the involved bacteria that you analyzed. I'll now walk you through how to interpret this output. Because there are two rows of data, we can see that the example was a double mutant. This means that it had two mutations in comparison to the ancestor. Column C tells us the nucleotide position where we would locate the mutation in the Pseudomonas fluorescence genome. For example, the first mutation was found at position 1,359,570. Columns D and E tell us how the nucleotide sequence changed. In this case, a single nucleotide was mutated from a G to a T. Columns J and K tell us how the mutation changed the codon sequence pre present at this position. In this case, a GAA is now a TAA. Column M tells us the effect of this change on the amino acid sequence of the encoded protein. In this case, the ancestor had glutamic acid at this position, but the evolved mutant has a stock codon. In some cases, Patrick will provide information about the gene's name, which is found in column Q, and proposed function, which is found in column R. In most cases, the gene will not be identified in the Patrick output. 
column P provides a unique identifier for the gene that was mutated. This identifier can be used to find out more information about the mutated gene. A good resource for this is the Pseudomonas Genome Database, 